so this is my checklist of, of endoscopic procedures and uh, I try to, and, and it's very important to <coughs> check before you begin with your surgery that everything of the in the, with the endoscope is, is well functioning. The nurses, they have a lot of experience in dealing with the microscope, but I think they have less experience than uh, dealing with the endoscope and so the responsibility is in you to say that everything is, is fine and everything's function and if you are in the ventricle and you have a problem with the endoscope and the equipment um, you, you cannot go in and out and in and out this is too dangerous so before beginning with the procedure uh, assemble the endoscope and the camera that means look for the focus look that you have the white balance look that the orientation of the camera is fixed and that 12 o'clock is 12 o'clock 6 o'clock is 6 o'clock look for the suction and the irrigation systems what we have learned to that we have to irrigate all the canals because after the sterilization of the endoscopes there may be some agencies in the canal and uh, it can result in an aseptical meningitis so try to irrigate all the canals and uh, it's really helpful and we we on that. Ensure that the drainage canal is open because you always have a, a free irrigation via a tube and if the irrigation canal is closed you have an increase in, the, in, the, in pressure. So you, it really can result in a metriasis. Ensure clear visualization and illumination before surgery. Look for the light cable that is not black, that is optimal function. Provide your video recording system and there was one story, it was, I think it was in, in, in Netherlands or something like that. Uh, mostly the camera and the recording system, they are switched like this, that, that is a loop. So from the camera, it will go to the, the, to the video system and then to the monitor. So the monitor shows you that what the endoscope, what the, the video system shows you. And so there was in this story, the surgeon began the surgery and uh, he said, please record the, my surgery and the nurse, she not pushed the buttons for the record, but for play. And so the surgeon saw the surgery of the last procedure. Yes, and he was, oh, there's the forearm monroe, forearm monroe, yeah. and then he was about 10 centimeters in the ventricle, that means he damaged the brain stem. So look for it, that it's work, and, and these are things, they can happen and they are happening. If you are in the ventricle and you are disorientated, go backwards to saw the landmarks, in case of hemorrhage, do not go out, don't assist and go out with the endoscope. Stay there, irrigation, and look what is and what can I do. If you're going out, you will never find the source of the bleeding again. Yes, if the ventricle is full of blood, you will never find the site again. If, uh, if you are in doubt or if you cannot reach your goal, abandon the procedure, don't force anything. And uh, be prepared to perform a craniotomy if necessary. So i show you some examples. This was a, a young lady, 18 years, and uh, she presented as an emergency case with, with headaches since some days. And what you see, uh, she in the CT scan, the, the ventricles are enlarged. You see some hypodensia around the ventricles, <laughs> and you can estimate that there is a kind of a tumor, and the MRI shows a tumor of the thalamus and the uh, occlusive hydrocephalus. So what we planned was, uh, you see here again, the tumor, the enlarged ventricles. And uh, what we planned was a tumor biopsy and the ventriculostomy. Um, what do you do first? The tumor biopsy or the ventriculostomy? First treat the enlarged ventricles, first treat hydrocephalus. Yes, if you have a bleeding after the tumor biopsy, you will never reach a ventriculostomy. So first plan the ventriculostomy and then the, the tumor biopsy. And so the optimal trajectory to do the, the ventriculostomy would be for Ram Monroy and the flow of the third ventricle. And the optimal trajectory to reach the tumor is this trajectory. So you have to choose a, a burr hole in the middle of those two. And this is the video. So you see we're in the lateral ventricle. The choroid plexus leads you to the forearm of Monroy. Yes. And you see you are in between those targets. The target for the ventriculostomy is here, and the target for the tumor is here. But you can reach with this intermediate burr hole, you can reach both, uh, um, both targets. So the first thing is to perform the ventriculostomy. And we 
also perforate, we try to perforate with this Fogarty catheter and then dilatate. You see basilar artery here, mammillary bodies, and you see the pulsating and that shows that you have a successful uh, ventriculostomy. We are using in some cases uh, the, the monopolar to shrink the floor that, that the ends will not come together again and that you have no, no scarring which, which can occlude the stoma again. And you see there's no other membrane and so you have uh, reached your, your ventriculostomy. Now going for the biopsy and uh, you see it, it bleeds but it was not that much so with the coagulation we could reach a good hemostasis and this is postoperative image in some cases we are doing a, a small craniotomy it's only, only reach a better cosmetic if you have it it's very near to the friend of if you have a a bar head and you see the burr hole always yes and if you're doing a craniotomy and replace it with some cranio fix holders you do not have this burr hole so it for, for cosmetic reasons it may be sometimes better to use a craniotomy and you see the ventricle size and the tumor is still is stable it was an astrocytoma uh, grade 2 tumor and uh, still stable disease very basal in the front and this is the video you see the foramen of Monroe, and now going in the third ventricle, and you see aqueduct is here. So this is uh, inferior, this is superior. You see here the cyst. And you see this is the roof of the third ventricle. You normally do not see by doing a ventriculostomy, but here you can see the roof. And uh, I'm in favor of using this coagulation and so we did a perforation some perforations and then we cut with a scissor to perform a wide opening of the cyst and you see you have this wide opening and you can go in the cyst but you cannot control the opposite part of the cyst, so uh, it would be too dangerous to do another opening here. But uh, this anterior fenestration is uh, uh, sufficient. And now you see again the aqueduct. And you see it's, it's wide open now. In the post-op image, you see the cyst is collapsed. The aqueduct, you see a flow in the aqueduct here. And this was the burr hole here, as planned before. And in this case, we covered it with a, with a PMMA bone cement. So this was a, a young boy, one and a half years, with a macrocephalus and some developmental delay. And he also had some episodes of nausea, vomiting, which were more frequently. And so he developed in the last days before the presentation he had a uh, regular an opistotonus and he came like this and one saw beside the macrocephalus the enlarged ventricles and the typical signs of a supracellar cyst with, a, with this cystic lesion. So a typical sign of a, a supracellar cyst. This is the video. It was a pre approach on the left side and you see the cyst is bulging into the lateral ventricle. You see it's overlapping uh, the borders of the foramen of Monroe and the first thing we're doing is to shrink the cyst. And you see the, f the foramen is becoming more and more free. And you have a good control. You see what is on the other side. Again, the fenestration with a scissor.
and we shrink these these borders of the cyst. And uh, the treatment of a, of a supracellar cyst, we do this fenestration to the superior part of the cyst, and we try to perform a ventriculostomy as well. And you see the the, the membrane is very very uh, bulged into the uh, prepontine space. And you see this is oculomotor nerve. There was oculomotor nerve, and there was the the abducens nerve. And um, we were not able to to cut this cyst because it was bulged inside, but working along the clivus, as Dr. Suri said, is a good technique. And now we saw there is another membrane here along the clivus, so the ventriculostomy is not done yet. And you see there is one membrane here, so it was like this, and we have to cut in this direction, close to the abducent nerve, which came in view. There is abducent nerve here. And this was too small for a permanent ventriculostomy, so we tried to dilatate it with a Fogarty catheter. And you see we're working away from the abducent nerve to the midline while uh, inflating the balloon. And now we had a good opening of both uh, membranes. This is the window to the now third ventricle. And looking for to the fornix, there are no contusion. It looks good. No bleeding in the ventricles. Inspection of the canal, there are no bleedings. Um, okay. 